Yo, what's going on guys? Arax here, welcome back to another Monster Hunter World video. And today, I want to bring you guys a bonus video, something we're calling Weapon Workshop Plus. Right now, I'm working to get you guys a new weapon tutorial each week. They take quite a long time to make, so that's really the fastest I can work. However, in between that, I wanted to bring you guys a little bonus episode. Following on from my charge blade and bow tutorials, there were a couple of additional things I've discovered since then. Some of it was discovered through playing with the weapon even more, and some stuff came from you guys in the comments. Obviously, it's not possible to go back and edit the existing tutorials, so that is where Weapon Workshop Plus comes in. In between those tutorials, if there are any additional discoveries, extra things I think you guys would like to know about, be that advanced tips or just things I forgot to mention, then I'll drop one of these to share that additional information. So, with that being said, today's video has a couple of extra charge blade tips and a few cool things for the bow. So if you do enjoy this, then a like would be super appreciated. And be sure to comment down below and let me know if you guys found this helpful and if you like this extra bonus format. Now, let's kick things off with the charge blade. First up, the sliding slash. If you saw my weapon tutorial, then you'll know that following an attack, you can input a direction and press circle to perform a sliding slash. This is good for repositioning or dodging an incoming attack. But something I didn't really convey properly in my original tutorial is that it's also an incredibly useful tool to set up the appropriate distance for a super amped element discharge. You should all be familiar with this move, most easily done from the shield thrust shortcut, it's one of your main damage dealers. And if you're using an impact type fire, it also has great KO potential. But it also swings quite wide, so if you're too close, you'll completely miss with the follow up shockwave. Well, enter the sliding slash. Assuming you're in combat, building files, and the monster goes down, your next move would be to go in for the super amped element discharge. But instead of running backwards and gauging the distance that way, if you press triangle, following the file store instead of holding it, you'll perform a quick vertical slice. This move is purely here so we can trigger the sliding slash since it needs to follow an attack. Following that, if you pull back and press circle, you'll slide backwards and from there you can then go into the super shortcut. And that should put you just about the right distance away to successfully land the attack. In some cases, if you are super close to the monster, it might still be a tiny bit close, but in the middle of combat, when your windows are limited, then this is an incredibly quick way to get in position and pull off the attack, knowing that you're gonna land it correctly for good damage. So to recap, when you see your opening, following the file charge, perform a quick attack, which is most easily done by pressing triangle, slide backwards and go into your super amped element discharge. On top of that, the only other thing is just a super quick clarification. Contrary to what I said in my original tutorial, you don't actually need full files to charge your sword. You only need a charged shield. I still stand by what I said though, that it's more efficient to do both at the same time. So instead of charging your shield, charging your sword and then storing your files, you might as well store files and charge the sword back to back. But should the situation present itself that you want a charged sword, say you are bouncing, you need that natural mind's eye, then you can charge it provided your shield is charged. Now that's it for the charge blade, so now let's move over to the bow. Just three quick things I want to cover here. First up, the charging sidestep. I mentioned in the tutorial that this can be used to charge up your shots and it's also a great way to reposition or dodge incoming attacks and that still holds true. However, there's one additional thing you can do with this move that is incredibly useful, especially in situations where you're forced to move. Normally, following a charge sidestep, you would refocus your aim to make sure you are still hitting the monster. However, if you don't touch the right analog stick at all, then following a charge sidestep, your next shot will automatically fire at the previous location. Take this as an example. I'm gonna fire at this pillar, then input a direction with the left stick and X, but I will not touch the right stick. Following the dodge, I can then fire again, and provided I haven't tried to correct my aim, the shot will land at the previous location. I can then dodge again, fire again, and repeat this process, all whilst I have stamina. Now, if you use this in a combat scenario, then if the first hit landed on, say, the head of a monster, provided it didn't move much, then following a dash, I could know with confidence that I would then be able to hit that same location again. This even works if you dash past the target, you can shoot almost backwards towards the previous shot location, and suddenly moving and shooting just got a whole lot easier. This also pairs incredibly nicely with the next point I wanted to cover, and that was the fact that whilst dashing, you're able to maintain your max level charge all whilst you dash. I explained this in the tutorial, that dashing levels up your charge, and that it uses a fair bit of stamina, but I feel like I didn't emphasize enough that you can use this to maintain max level charge whilst moving. Yes, it does use a lot of stamina, but if you have max stamina and you run with the constitution armor skill and some sort of dash juice, then you can really up your damage output whilst also remaining incredibly mobile. In this situation, every single one of these hits is max level charge, and using the previous tip, we're also able to confidently shoot knowing that the shots are landing in the previous location. And then finally, a quick note on Dragon Piercer. You'll know if you've used this that once you initiate the Dragon Piercer, 
There's only so far you can move your reticle, you can't completely change direction once you're locked in place, and while that still holds true, there is a little trick you can do to get a little bit more rotation out of it. If you face the direction you want to fire after you've initiated the Dragon Piercer, and you tap L2 at the very last second just before the shot releases, you can essentially unlock yourself from the restricted view and fire outside the area you would normally be able to aim. This will take some practice to perfect, but literally tap L2 just before the shot releases, and you can even pull a full 180 and fire behind you. This is obviously incredibly useful knowing that the Dragon Piercer locks you in place and sometimes the monster moves. So hit up the training room, learn your timing, and take advantage of this. Also, as one final passing note, again something I didn't really call out too clearly in my last tutorial, but it's in the name Dragon Piercer, it is a piercing attack. So if you want to get the most out of this shot, then the best way to use it is to try and fire it down the entire length of the monster. In other words, fire from the head all the way through the tail, or if you're on the other side, tail all the way through the head. Admittedly, this isn't always possible. Sometimes your positioning might not be right, and you might just want to get the shot in anyway, and that's fair enough. But if you are in a position where, say, the monster is trapped or sleeping, and you do have a little bit more time, then shooting down the entire length of the monster will hit multiple times, and of course allow you to get the most out of this shot. But that, my friends, is it for Weapon Workshop Plus. Just a few additional tips following on from my first two tutorials. These extra episodes may not be every week, but they will drop here and there anytime I feel there's extra stuff I want to share with you guys. Be sure to keep it locked because the next Weapon Workshop tutorial drops this Sunday. But until then, thanks very much for watching. Take it easy. Catch you next time. Peace out. <laughs>